crowd this morning and thank you all so much for joining us this morning um, for the new director's orientation. We're happy you're all here. And uh, my presentation for the next 50 minutes or so is called Your Role as Director. And um, it aims to give you like a broad overview of your role as director and in particular contrasting it uh, with the board's role. But before we get started, I'll introduce myself. I'm Nicole Wolf, and I'm the uh, branch manager of the library development branch here at KDLA. I've been with KDLA since 2005, and um, I spent about nine years as a regional consultant working closely with directors and boards. So I'm always really happy when I get to speak with directors. Uh, so feel free to type in the chat as we go along, um, and and um, I hope you all uh, enjoy the presentation today. Okay. So first of all, um, KDLA welcomes you as a new public library director. Welcome to uh, Kentucky Library Land, or if you're not new, uh, welcome to being a public library director in Kentucky. Um, so as a public library director, um, you may find yourself responsible for a lot of things that are not typical librarian roles um, and probably weren't covered in library science classes. Uh, this can include things, everything from facilities maintenance, planning, dealing with tricky personnel issues, technology mishaps, etc. Uh, you may be lucky enough to have staff members who cover some of these areas, but if you don't, um, it may be you. So um, I like to say the great thing about being a public library director is you wear many different hats and you never know what's going to happen when you show up to work in the morning. And the bad thing about being a library director is you wear many different hats and you never know what's going to happen when you show up in the morning. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it is a very, very valuable uh, and needed role in your community and it can be very rewarding. And so today um, I'm going to be talking about the role of the director specifically in um, seven key areas, yes, um, and contrasting that with the role of the board. Um, so the key areas are listed on the slide. And then at the end of the presentation, I'm going to share some resources and tools that might be helpful to you. So we won't go into depth in all of these areas, but I hope to just give you a good overview of each area and then uh, point you to more resources for more information and inspiration. So the first area um, we're going to talk about is working with your library board. So the library board is um, the governing body of the library. So the library board members, they are public officials who provide leadership and vision uh, for the effective and efficient operation of the library. And they follow sound practices for planning, administration, management, and funding. The board as a whole, not an individual trustee, is legally in charge and governs the library and then the library director is their one employee and the board and the director have separate but complementary roles so governance includes setting broad but clear policies for the library budget approval and strategic planning the director, in turn, manages the day-to-day -day operations of the library and supervises the staff. So um, the board reviews and adopts all policies and policy revisions, 
policies usually fall within three broad categories, board operations, library operations, and personnel. So the director can provide proposed uh, policies or examples of policies from other libraries for the board to adopt. And then the director implements the policy set by the board and also comes up with procedures for carrying out those policies. Um, so in some libraries, the board members can work together with the library director and staff to draft policy before it comes before the board. Another thing that the board is responsible for is selecting nominees to fill uh, your board vacancies. So the director uh, will typically uh, assist in this process <clears throat> by suggesting names, but it's actually the board's responsibility to select and vote on the nominees. Um, if you do have further questions about filling board vacancies, we do have an archived webinar on that topic, and it's called How to Fill Your Library Board Vacancy. And it's on our archived webinars page. Um, so the board and the, the director work closely together and sometimes their roles can seem to overlap and there may be times when you aren't sure what is your responsibility and what is up to the board. So as we go through each of the remaining areas, I'll kind of highlight the differences between the director and the board's roles. And then I also have um, a handout that's a division of duties that summarizes the differences that I believe you may have already gotten over email, and if not, you will get that um, after the presentation. So I also wanted to uh, talk briefly about effective board meetings. Um, Board meetings that run effectively can really help to keep the business of governing the library running smoothly. Board meetings that are not efficient, on the other hand, may really hinder the process and make it take longer and be more difficult. So here are just a few tips for making board meetings more effective. One of the best things you can do to foster an effective board meeting is to send out the board packet um, enough in advance where the board members can go over the materials before the meeting. Another thing you can do is verify that a quorum will be able to attend the meeting a day or two beforehand um, so you can avoid last minute cancellations due to having lack of a quorum. And then ideally, um, the board president We'll keep the meeting on track, move things along, limit tangents. Typically, an effective board meeting will typically last 60 to 90 minutes, sometimes longer, depending on what's, what you have going on. Uh, but board meetings that regularly last longer than 90 minutes usually result in irritated or exasperated board members and perhaps spotty meeting attendance. So starting meetings on time can also help. Another tip is to have a parliamentary procedure, such as Robert's Rules of Order, uh, that the trustees are aware of and that they understand the main tenets of. That can really help to keep the meeting uh, moving on track. So those are just a few suggestions, and I do have a handout that's a previous trustee tip with more tips on it. Okay, moving on. I wanted to touch on library law under this section. Um, so in working with your board and in your role as director, it's important to know what library laws apply to your library. Um, the most important thing to remember is that the specific laws that apply to your library depend on the statutes under which your library was formed. So on the slide, I've listed the possible statutes. Um, all libraries have an establishment and a governing statute. Your establishment statute is the one that your library was established under. 
And um, the second one is the one that your library is governed under. Now, for many libraries, that's the same statute, um, but that's not always the case. So you can find your establishment statute. We have them all listed in Chapter 7 of the Trustee Manual on our website, or you can ask uh, your regional consultant. Oh, thank you, Charlie, for putting the link to that recording for the webinar on there. Okay, so once you know what statutes apply to your library, um, you can look in our trustee manual for examples of common laws that apply to your library. And we also have this document that I have a screenshot of. It's called Kentucky Laws for Public Libraries, Abridged References, and it's part of our director's toolkit on our website. And that just lists the common laws, and it also has a link to the um, Legislative Research Commission's online Kentucky Revised Statutes. You can search them, and you can also browse them online. Um, you can also ask your regional consultant for assistance. You know, as librarians, we can't give legal advice or interpret the law, but we can point you to sources to go for more information. We also encourage every library to have its own library attorney. Um, so that is somebody that you can go to for legal counsel and advice on your particular situation. And that person can also review any policies before adoption. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna cover under working with your board. The next section we're gonna talk about is personnel. Um, so the library board is responsible for hiring, disciplining, and evaluating um, the, the director. Uh, the director's their one employee, and then the director hires and manages all other staff. So as the director, you'll assess the needs of the library to see whether or not more staff are needed or current staff need to maybe change or expand their roles to fulfill the library's needs. And of course, when there are open positions, you'll try to find the right people to fill those roles. And you may also have to be willing to fire someone if you discover they are not the right fit for the role. Um, the director is also in charge of ensuring that all staff maintain their proper certification through the uh, Kentucky Certification uh, Board. And if, you're, if you have a staff person whose certificate has expired, they, the board will receive a letter and be notified about it as well. So the director can recommend personnel policies for board approval. That can include job descriptions, salary schedules, benefit packages, um, and then the board would adopt those. Okay, also along with personnel, um, the board can establish a clearly defined hiring policy. And we do have an example of one on our example policies page, which I'll show you all later, um, that can be followed for all positions. And then the director can, um, can use that policy to, to go through the process of filling the staff vacancies. The library board um, should annually evaluate the director to provide feedback on, on your performance. And, um, and then the library director, in turn, um, should evaluate the performance of the staff at least annually to let them know how they're doing. One thing that can be really helpful um, here is just having up-to-date, clearly defined personnel policies job descriptions, an employee handbook. Um, that can just make it clear to everybody uh, what the expectations are. 
And one thing I like to note here is even though the library director is ultimately responsible for the staff, it is a good idea to keep the board in the loop with what's going on personnel wise. So, you know, if bookmobile librarian quits, for example, let the board know that and that you'll be looking to fill the position. The library board can also be a great sounding board for you. They can give you advice on what you should do in a personnel situation. So that is five people that you can go to for advice um, for figuring something out. And as you get to know your library board, um, you'll discover what level of detail they like to know as far as personnel is concerned. Some board aren't some boards may not be as interested in the day-to-day -day goings on, but most like to know what is going on and any issues that you're encountering. Um, if you would like more information about human resources, KDLA does have an archived webinar called uh, HR Basics, The Fundamentals, and that is presented by an HR professional, and that is under administration on our archived webinars page. All right. Okay, so the next area um, we're going to talk about is finances, and this is a big area. So as the legally appointed authority for overseeing the library, trustees have the ultimate responsibility for the library's finances. The library board is responsible um, to the taxpayers for the way the library funds are accounted for and expended. So the library board adopts a budget every year and the library director uh, usually gives them a draft of the budget to review. Sometimes you'll come up with the budget alone and sometimes the director works with the board president and or the board treasurer to come up with the budget. So uh, the board will approve the annual budget and monitor the money going in and out. And they do this through reviewing and approving the monthly financial report, which is typically prepared by the director or an assigned staff person for each monthly board meeting. By statute, the board treasurer um, has custody of all money, securities, and obligations belonging to the district and shall disperse money only for the uses and purposes of the district and in a manner described by the bylaws. The treasurer signs checks for disbursement from the library account upon receipt of a board approved itemized voucher. And the board also adopts policies that provide direction for the day-to-day -day management of finances and then the director in turn manages the day-to-day -day finances within those guidelines set by your board. Okay, also along with finances, um, the director will contract with an auditor to perform the required audit. The library director, or you may have an assigned staff person, will assemble all the documents necessary for the audit and work with the auditor. And the board and director together will review the completed audit and determine if changes in the library operations may be appropriate. So the library director implements changes determined by the board. And did I miss a question? All right. Okay, Shannon, let me read your question. Okay, uh, Shannon, I can look online and um, see if there's an example to share with you. Um, you may check the Campbell County Public Library. They may have theirs online or, um, or you could contact um, Steve Parrott and he may have um, some for you as well. And then Alicia gave you some good contact info too. All right. Um, so if applicable for your library, the board will adopt the tax rate, uh, which is coming up in just a couple of months after reviewing the needed information uh, provided by KDLA. 
And the board and the director can also tap other possible sources of revenue to meet the library's budget needs. There are also several items the director is responsible for submitting to the Department for Local Government, and Carly's going to talk more about that later. And I, I include it as one of your handouts, our public library calendar that the regionals put together, and that also lists the, the DLG deadlines on there. And uh, the director's toolkit on our website also have a, has a whole section on funding and fiscal operations with more information in terms of managing finances. All right. The library security alarm goes off at 2 a.m. Who will be called in to deal with the situation? If the library floods, who will have to assess the damage? Unless you're lucky enough to have a systems administrator, that person is probably you. So as the director, um, you're responsible for ensuring the overall maintenance and upkeep of the library's buildings and grounds. In this capacity, you may encounter issues regarding anything from accessibility, daily housekeeping, grounds maintenance, repair or replacement of equipments and furnishings, service contracts, or a variety of other upkeep concerns. You may also find yourself becoming the manager of a renovation, expansion, or construction project as community needs and uh, funding allows. So as director, you'll assess what the library's needs are and determine if the current library building meets those needs, and if not, what can be done about it. Here you may encounter additional issues that will require your interaction with financial consultants, architects, designers, construction managers, craftsmen, and an awareness of entirely different requirements and concerns. And um, the board would be heavily involved in a project like this, uh, signing contracts, selecting the architect, approving invoices, et cetera. The best piece of advice I can give you here is just try to find the right people to, and get them on board with whatever issue or project you're dealing with or you're undertaking. Um, whether it's landscapers, engineers, architects with library experience, etc. So if you don't have a list from your predecessor, you can ask trustees, ask uh, library staff, other directors, KDLA staff can give you a list of recommended of recommendations for some of these. Um, and then once you have a list, just keep it somewhere where you can easily find it. On our director's toolkit, we do have a whole section on maintaining the facility. And on the slide, I've listed just a few of the session, the sections that are covered there. Um, and there's a lot more as well. And if you have any questions uh, regarding that area, of course, you can ask your regional consultant and they will try to point you in the right direction. Okay, the next area um, we're going to talk about is collections and programming. So once you have the right staff on board, they can provide a varied and innovative programming slate and help develop a diverse collection for your library. If your library has a small number of staff, you may be in charge of collection development and or some programming yourself or you may just love doing story time and you may just jump in if your programmer um, can't be there one day. So the director's role here is to recommend collection development and programming budgets and policies to the board. And the director also supervises the selection and maintenance of collections according to professional standards. And the director also supports and directs the library's programs. And to contrast that, the board's role here is to adopt a budget that supports and encourages growth of your programming and collections. 
and they are also responsible for adopting uh, collection development and program policies based on recommendations uh, from the director. Okay, so the next section I'm going to talk about is planning. When we talk about planning, we're typically talking about a strategic or a long range plan. Uh, so the board adopts the plan. Um, oftentimes the director will draft it and then the director is responsible for carrying it out. Um, you know, the strategic plan can really be an important piece because it can set the priorities of your library for the next few years. Uh, most cover three to five years. Um, some libraries right now, due to COVID, um, I've seen strategic plans only for the next year or two, so it just depends on the current conditions. Um, there are many different ways to undertake a planning process, and each board will determine the best method for your library. Um, but usually your strategic plan is based on your library's mission and vision on how the library can best serve the needs of the community. So under the direction of the board, the director or whoever the board designates, sometimes there's an outside consultant, will draft the plan for the board's consideration. Each board determines to what degree trustees will be involved in the development of the plan. But regardless of the process, um, the director will be intimately involved in drafting the plan and the board will adopt the final strategic plan. And then based on that plan, the director can create a strategy for how to achieve the plan's goals. And um, we do recommend that the board at least annually review the plan and make revisions as necessary. It's a living document. And the board uh, can monitor the progress of it and revise goals and objectives as needed. Let's see, Matt says, where can we find a comprehensive guide for professional standards for collections? And I can look into that and um, we can look into that and let you know. Okay. And Shannon says, are there deadlines pertaining to strategic plans? Um, so there's no like statutory requirement to have a strategic plan. Um, so if yours expires, that's okay. Um, I suspect that um, quite a few libraries may have found themselves in that situation where it expired in 2020 and plans may have been put on hold. Um, so no. Um, you know, just uh, begin the, the next planning process whenever it makes sense for your, for your library. Um, and yeah, as I said, I've seen some libraries right now, their strategic plan is just for the next year or just for the next two years due to the changing conditions. Okay, so the last area I'm going to talk about is advocacy. Um, with so much competition for public funding, it's so important that libraries be understood as the critical element of education, economic development, and improved quality of life that they are in every community. Um, both your library board and the director can advocate for the library and you're both in a position to be able to promote the library with local officials as well as neighbors, business associates, and friends. Uh, as the director, you can advise the board of any upcoming legislation or advocacy efforts that are relevant to the library and provide trustees with the tools and information needed for their own advocacy efforts. And also um, to ensure ongoing marketing efforts on behalf of the library. The library um, should try to keep the general public informed about the library services and programs. And the director can actively promote the library's programs 
and and encourage each staff person to also promote goodwill for the library. And um, advocacy uh, simply means to inform others about the library and the positive ways that it serves its, its constituents. So just some simple ways to think about advocating, just knowing what's going on in the library is a way to advocate, is a really a way of advocating because then you can more easily talk about it with family, neighbors, colleagues, um, talking to your business community leaders and other groups in your community, distributing literature about the library, promoting the library through other organizations, even submitting editorials to your local paper about library programs and efforts. Okay, and thanks Alicia for putting the link to the ALA collection development. Okay, and this um, slide has some links to um, resources for advocacy. The Kentucky Public Library Association has an advocacy committee. That's that first link at kpla.org slash advocacy. And that's one of the best ways to keep up with advocacy in Kentucky. And there's also national advocacy groups. The American Library Association has resources. The Public Library Association and then United for Libraries is a division of ALA that's specifically for library trustees, advocates, and friends groups and foundations. And so you can find out more information there. Okay, so I've... Uh, covered the seven broad areas um, as your role as director to contrast with the board's role. And I wanted to just share some resources um, that might help you in your role as director. So one of the most valuable can be your friendly neighborhood regional consultant. Um, this is a librarian who serves a specific geographic area and they're there to help you, your trustees and staff, uh, to create the best library for your community. So please feel free to reach out to them or to any KDLA staff person. We have four regions and each regional consultant covers 30 libraries. Um, if you don't know which region you're in, we have a map on our website. Um, or you can um, ask us or just type in the chat and we will let you know. Another resource that I've already mentioned a few times is our online public library director's toolkit. On the slide, it lists the sections of that. <clears throat> and we have two resources listed at the top that are specifically for new directors. <clears throat> And I did include those as handouts. I especially like the director starter checklist. That gives you things to think about during your first uh, days, weeks, and months on the job. <clears throat> and the regional consultants are continually working on updating um, the director's toolkit and making it better. If you have suggestions for how we could improve it or information, that's not on there that you think should be on there, let your regional consultant know. <clears throat> we also have the uh, our trustee manual, which is on our website, and it is geared towards trustees, but it's very valuable for directors too. So when you got some extra time, look through that. Uh, the table of contents, if you click on uh, one of those, it will take you directly to the sections. <clears throat> we, 
We also have um, a few pages of example policies on our website that are broken down into 10 essential board policies, personnel policies, and library operations policies. So like the toolkit, the regional consultants are currently working on looking at those and revising those. So when you go there, they are in Microsoft Word format for easier editing. Um, so um, download one, uh, look at the revision date on it, and then you'll want to look at it and modify it to suit your needs. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, we do recommend that your library attorney review all policies prior to adoption. And if you have a suggestion for an example policy that's not on our website, uh, let your regional consultant know. I also included as a handout the public library calendar that the regionals put together every year that's also on our website. Um, and this includes um, the fun, fun events, conferences, and the DLG um, deadlines. So we try to keep it up throughout the, keep it updated throughout the year as things change. Another great resource is the Kentucky Public Library Standards. These are through the Kentucky Public Library Association, and they include seven main areas for self-evaluation for your library, and those are listed on the slide. And so this can be a really great self-evaluation tool for your library to see where you're at, and it can help you uh, devise a plan to get to where you want to go. And sometimes it's used in conjunction with the development of your strategic plan. The director's discussion list, you're probably already familiar with that. Um, this is managed by the Kenton County Public Library and KDLA sends out important information on it. Um, so if you're not on the director's list serve, contact your regional consultant. And uh, yes, there's a lot of good information on the listserv. Um, it tends to be a little heavy on traffic, but it's worth it. <laughs> um, it's sometimes funny stuff, especially on a Friday, so you might check it today. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so the trustee certification training, um, we have five different modules and if the trustees watch all five of these and turn in a learning activity report, then they can become certified similar to how staff get certified and it's good for four years. But they, uh, all of the videos are available on our website and they range in length from around 20 minutes to around like I think 50 minutes. So um, I encourage you to watch those as time allows and encourage your trustees to watch those. Um, if you've got new trustees coming on, sometimes the library will watch, um, watch one of the videos as a group, either before or after a board meeting, um, since you're all there anyway. Are the trustees required to view the training? So our trustee certification training is voluntary. Um, we've had, uh, it's been around for several years now and it's been very well received, but they are not required to be certified. Um, that being said, as director, you can encourage your trustees to get certified. You can sort of set the expectation um, for that, if you would like, um, if you would like for your board to be certified, you can sort of mold that into the, um, the expectations during the orientation. Um, and yeah, if you have any specific questions about trustee certification, feel free to reach out to Charlie or Alicia. Okay. Um, so Grady, um, they're not, required to recertify. Um, they can watch the videos again. We do try to keep them up to date as things change. Um, 
so the certification is good for four years. So if they're due to expire, um, they could um, watch the videos again to recertify. Uh, I know also they can, once they're certified, if they get um, eight, I think it's eight credit hours, they can recertify, but I'm probably getting too deep into it. Um, so I probably should let Alicia and Charlie cover that. But um, uh, it's been really, we found it to be really helpful for the trustees. Yeah, thanks, Alicia. Um, Okay, so that's all of the um, resources that I wanted to share. And I did just want to leave you with a final thought. Um, you know, being a director, it can be really overwhelming and stressful at times. Um, but it's also a very, very valuable uh, role and such a vital role in your community. And it can also be a lot of fun. So just go forth and be fabulous. And please remember, you do not have to do this alone. Find your people, staff members, board members, community partners, KDLA staff. Just sometimes just having the right people to go to can make a big difference. Um, look on our website for more information. Reach out to your regional consultant. Um, reach out to one of our statewide consultants or any of our staff. And all of us at KDLA are here and uh, we would love to be able to assist you um, however we can. Um, and so that slide just has my contact information with my phone number. And I'm not sure why Terry's number, why that slide had Terry's number on it, but I do think that in the, in the past years ago, his phone number used to be that phone number. So anyway, um, we do have a form on our website to submit um, trustee nominations. Thank you, Tiffany. There is a trustee nomination form. I believe some libraries still mail us a letter with their two nominees, and that's fine. Um, but a lot of people prefer the online form now. So please, if you have any questions while we're here, um, ask away. Um, I hope this presentation was at least somewhat helpful for you. And again, we're just really uh, thankful for you being here today and, uh, and um, hope that you really enjoy um, your new journey as a public library director and we will help you to succeed in any way that we can. All right, thank you very much, Nicole. I was typing and thinking something else at the same time. So I was like, oh, yeah, make, I need to say something. <laughs> That's all right. I think yeah. I finished a little early so they can have an extra long break, maybe. <laughs> or, or I was going to, since Jay's not in here um, quite yet, I was maybe going to grab their attention for about um, 10 minutes and oh, never mind sorry guys <laughs> yeah. i'll stop talking now yeah that's i hope okay. you enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> thank you so much nicole all right um yes i didn't put us on the um schedule but while we're waiting for our next presenter to um hop on here um i'm gonna take this opportunity and uh charlie um you definitely hop in um, when you can. And oh, CJ just got in here. I'm going to talk anyways. Um, about uh, staff certification, that's something that um, Nicole talked about, and she also talked about trustee certification. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yourself and public life and um, most of your public library staff, unless they're just, um, say, part-time circulation staff, whatever, um, by uh, Kentucky statute, have to be um, certified. Um, so, and we have various levels. We've got a whole entire um, web page devoted to um, public library staff certification. 
Um, so just to let you all um, just be aware of um, that um, as directors. Um, the individuals technically are, are responsible for their own certification, um, but you know, um, you all as directors um, can have a varying um, responsibility in making sure that um, yourself and your staff are all properly um, certified. And um, Charlie and I um, handle all that, so please contact us with any questions um, that you um, have about it. Those um, it's put down in statute um, that certification is required, but then there is administrative regulations that kind of spell out in more detail, um, you know, how certification operates, what the requirements are, different things um, like that. And again, like I said, that's all on our. Um, website um, for you all to um, take a look at and um, for those of your staff that already have their initial certification um, and are working towards um, every five years they have to um, renew their certification and so there's a requirement that they have to get so many um, contact hours in in order to renew their certification so one of the ways that um, we kind of keep track of that is uh, to ask for um, annual summations every year um, and unfortunately it's paperwork um, but it's important that um, it gets done because we and that way we keep track of how many hours your staff has so people know you know are they close to um, being able to renew how many more if they're not how many more hours they do need because um, yes central region is October um, because if staff is not properly certified, um, there is, um, it's considered a um, statute violation is, and there is a fine um, that goes along with it. It's um, $100 using the first year, um, they will get dinged twice after that if they're still not um, properly certified. It's a, still a $100 a year. Um, Fine. So we don't want anybody to run afoul of um, of that and have to pay a fine. So, like I said, if you do have any questions about that, make sure to reach out to um, Charlie and I. We can answer any of those questions. And yeah, like um, she mentioned, the trustee certification it's completely uh, voluntary. We're hoping um, soon to have um, some courses for if you do have part time staff that aren't required to be certified. Um, we're hoping very soon to have some part-time certification courses um, that that staff can take. Again, it'll be voluntary. They don't have to, but like with the trustee certification, it provides some really good information and um, particularly with both staff, particularly with trustees, you, like Terry uh, mentioned in his um, presentation, there are certain laws and there are certain procedures you do not want to be on the wrong side of. Um, so with the trustee certification, it kind of reminds or lets your trustees know in the first place what they should or shouldn't um, do. That way everybody stays legal and out of trouble. Um, so like I said, just wanted to mention those uh, certifications. Um, and yes, like Grady said, um, We've divided um, when annual summations are due up according to region, and that's mainly for Charlie and I's benefit so that we're not getting all 120 counties at one time. This way it kind of spaces um, things out. And um, we do have, of course, a webinar like we do about er almost about everything we handle or do. We have a webinar for that. Um, so you all are welcome to look for that. Um, all right, and I will stop um, talking now and um, let y'all go on a little bit of a break uh, while we get um, Jay and the annual report set up. So, but first, I want to do a shout out to Charlie and see if um, there's anything that I was remiss in saying about certification that um, she wants to to let y'all know about. So, Charlie, if you're around. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, and want to say anything about 
something I didn't emphasize or missed, um, definitely go for it. Okay, she made have um, probably stepped away. Um, so if y'all want to go take about a five minute break, go stretch. And then um, if Jay is good with it, I see him um, here right now. We'll uh, start back in about five minutes and start back a little early. Jay, does that sound good to you? Sure, I'm ready. Okay, I'll just let him go stretch for five minutes. Yeah. I'm going to move you up to um, presenter so you can okay. drive your presentation. <laughs> 